Hi, I'm Antoinette June with Free Speech TV, and I'm here with Miriam Pena. She is the co-executive director of the Colorado Progressive Coalition. So Miriam, I know you guys do a lot of work um, to try and raise awareness around racial profiling. Tell me a little bit about that. So CPC has been working on uh, racial profiling under the umbrella of our racial justice and civil rights program. Um, we started this work in er the early 2000 um, when um, we were noticing just excessive patterns of police brutality and people being people of color being stopped without reason. That year we um, launched a racial profiling hotline and passed some of the most aggressive anti-racial profiling um, legislation in the country. Um, and we continue to do that just um, over Martin Luther King weekend this year, we relaunched our hotline, which um, is statewide, um, to uh, be able to track um, the, these similar patterns still happening. Um, every time we pa try to pass legislation or try to pass policy against police brutality and things like that, um, what we hear over and over again is racial profiling doesn't exist. And so um, this is a way for us to um, quantify that it does happen. And so um, we just want to raise awareness about that, especially over Cinco de Mayo weekend. Um, tell me, uh, you know, what brought you out today? Why did you come to Cinco de Mayo? Cinco de Mayo, um, so I was born in Mexico. Cinco de Mayo has a different um, meaning in, you know, first generation Mexican culture. Um, but I think over the years, Cinco de Mayo, I, I hope continues. It's, it's, it's not as important, I would say, as like Mexican Independence Day. And Cinco de Mayo, I think, in the United States has become more um, of a holiday to that symbolizes uh, Mexican pride. You know, it, it, it just kind of um, embodies the Mexican pride and that the underdog fight that everybody loves. And so I, I remember it and it makes me proud to be a Mexican American. Now I know earlier today we were talking about how successful CPC is in their outreach and you know they're organizing within the community. Tell me a little bit about the events that you guys hold um, at CPC and how you guys organize to get people to come to those events. Yeah, so we, um, like any other nonprofit organization, we're really thoughtful and strategic about where we want to be in three years and five years, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, overall, we want to create a progressive Colorado where everyone has the opportunity to prosper um, and, and live a good quality life, um, in particular representing um, communities of color and low-income um, families. Um, but we also have to be nimble enough and flexible enough to um, take to the street important things that happen. So, for example, the Trayvon Martin, um, we that that march really like came from the community. It wasn't something that CPC planned, but we were able to mobilize through the community organizing and outreach that we do. Um, and it was really just trying to inspire people to come out and, and um, kind of get angry with us and demand um, justice for, for those types of issues. And, and we'll continue doing that over and over as um, we see police officers getting their jobs back with back pay that have just brutalized our community. Um, CPC will be one of the voices there to, um, you know, to be the outlet for, for community members to fight back. And what are some of the other initiatives that, you, initiatives that you guys work on? I know I've been to an event where you guys were, you know, standing up to fraud closure. So oh, tell me a little bit yeah. about those. Oh, that is so much fun. So I think, um, Antoinette, you were at the event when we um, shut down the Wells Fargo. And so we like moved in, shut Wells Fargo down for like four or five hours. Um, and it was just the, the coolest event. Like you have people, community members facing foreclosure, walking with like household items and juxtaposed with like the like SWAT, um, you know, in their riot gear and everything. And we're just like, we just want to say no to foreclosures. So actually one of the things since then, and I'm glad you brought this up, we, um, CPC has filed for a ballot initiative. We're trying to qualify something right now for the 2012 um, election that would pretty much um, require banks and lending institutions to prove that they own the debt on your house, to so prove that they own the note of your house before they foreclose on you. I know it seems crazy, but it's happening right now over and over. Some people, they don't even know who owns their house anymore, but they're being foreclosed on. And so they're, they're out hundreds of thousands of dollars and they have no idea why, for, why Wells Fargo is coming to their door saying you're foreclosed on. And they're like, I've been paying. 
Um, so it's a very simple, modest request. Banks should be able to prove that they own the note on your house before that they can foreclose on you. Um, so we are currently trying to gather signatures. We have to collect 86, 87,000 valid signatures before August to qualify for the ballot. But we know if we can take this to the hands of the voters, like we're gonna win. And this is just a great way to stand up against the big banks and you know the, the horrible things that they're getting away with. So we're really excited about that. I know with uh, Free Speech TV, I kind of work on the social media. So I remember a couple of, it was, maybe it's been a month now since you guys launched your um, petition against the, it was calling for an investigation into the Denver Police Department. Oh, yeah. How's that petition doing? That petition is going okay. So this uh, was all initiated uh, maybe last summer. The um, ACLU wrote a letter and had a bunch of organizations like CPC sign on um, demanding that the Department of Justice investigate the Denver Police Department and its practices. Um, not much movement has happened. Um, several months ago, I spoke with um, some members of the FBI uh, based in Denver, and they said, um, it's still in the works and it's so slow and so you know keeping it in the media keeping it uh, you know the attention alive needs to continue happening so a few months ago we were like hey let's like make sure people know that we're still waiting for the DOJ to, to investigate so the petition has been has been going well I know a few weeks ago we crossed the the thousand person mark so I mean I think those can only be you know positive signs and and I hope not only you know to a department as big as DOJ, but I hope that that's also a sign to our, our local elected officials, like our police chief, our mayor, to say, look how many people like are demanding that we investigate the, the DPD. So that's good. And that, that petition is still alive on our website, progressivecoalition.org. We have a petition there for um, the DOJ to investigate DPD. And we also have a petition there uh, for this foreclosure uh, ballot initiative. And if people go on, it's under economic justice uh, page. Um, if you go on, it's a great way for us to get involved with you if you want to um, help us out with that, or if you want to help us out with racial justice um, and, the, and investigating the DPD. Okay, so one more time, tell us the website that we can go to to find out more information. It's www.progressivecoalition.org, um, and there you'll find both petitions. If you sign up, we'll, we're really good about keeping in touch with you. And just um, over the Cinco de Mayo weekend and festivities, um, our hotline is going, and that phone number, if I can give it out, is 303-866-0908, and then you'll be prompted to, I think, push number two if you um, have a complaint and um, we'll follow up with you and do an intake. And, you know, we can't promise any um, legal resources or anything, but this is helping us build the narrative to put some pressure on the city um, and, and make sure that this doesn't happen in the future. Miriam, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. I'm Antoinette June from the Cinco de Mayo Festival in Denver, Colorado. <laughs>